for a long period of time while we were working on it, we were wondering whether it would ever get built. We broke ground, which is probably one of the uh, most exciting things uh, I had ever experienced was the groundbreaking ceremony because it was now actually going to get built. This film represents a portion of the story of building a building, from conception to construction to occupancy. My name is George Shipperite. John Heinrich and I are the architects for Lake Point Tower. Our names are on this building as though we alone are responsible, but this does not remotely resemble the truth. Hundreds of people contributed their ideas and energies to achieve this end result. Lake Point Tower is truly a group effort. It was not a very orderly process, but hopefully at least it did result in an orderly building. It all started when developers Bill Hartnett and Charlie Shaw, along with Fleur Properties Incorporated, leased this two and a half acre site near the corner of Ohio Street and Lakeshore Drive on the shore of Lake Michigan, yet adjacent to Chicago's Loop. Their objective was to build a really fine luxury apartment building. We decided to build just one high-rise tower and use the rest of the land for the other needed facilities, including a private park for the residents. The Y-shaped configuration for the tower gives each resident a view of Lake Michigan. In addition, there are two kinds of privacy. First, a physical privacy because the short hallways of each leg of the Y serve only four to six apartments. Second, there is a visual privacy. The 120 degree angle between the legs of the Y minimizes the ability to see into someone else's apartment. The total square footage of this project is 1,700,000 square feet. Within the base is the garage, approximately 60,000 square feet, which houses 750 cars. Here is the commercial area, which includes laundry facilities, supermarket, dry cleaners, beauty shop and barber shop, gift shop and health club. Because of the height of the tower, 645 feet, and the weight of the building, some 300 million pounds, and because of soil conditions, we decided to design the building like a tree with a central core that extends the full 70 stories. It acts as a simple cantilever, a box section which absorbs all the horizontal shear and bending so that the columns take only vertical loads. The first floor plan of the base shows you how the building works. You drive into the main entrance of the building at this point. You can continue on into the garage or circle and drop off a passenger at the lobby entrance. The low-rise bank of elevators is here. They travel approximately 700 feet a minute and serve the first 40 floors. The high-rise elevators serve the next 30 floors. They travel at 1,200 feet a minute. The loading dock offers direct access to the freight elevators for moving, deliveries, and rubbish removal. The plan of the plaza level shows you the tower in relation to the private park that covers the top of the base. In the park are a swimming pool, a reflecting pond, and a playground area. A fully enclosed community room looks out onto the gardens. Briefly, this explains the concept of Lake Point Tower, a community for 900 families. Now I'd like to tell you how we got it built. We drilled a test hole to determine the soil conditions. And the first thing we hit was 20 feet of rubble deposited after the Chicago fire. The last 10 feet of this was soaked with groundwater. Next, we hit lake sand, then soft clay, then hard pan. Finally, we hit boulders just above the limestone rock at a minus 115 feet. For engineering and economic reasons, we decided to land on hard pan at a minus 90 feet and bail out instead of going to bedrock. This decision proved to be very sound. Our structural engineer, Bill Schmidt, measured the settlement of the building after completion and it proved to be insignificant. Here is the site. This is where the real digging begins.
Now we've dug down far enough so that we can put our case on liner in position. The shafts range from 6 feet to 11 feet in diameter. And now we pound the 40 foot long case on liner into the hole. The next step is to drill the dirt out of the caisson shaft. What we end up with, because the caisson liner seals the water out, is a dry hole we can work in. When we get near the bottom, miners go down in the larger caisson shafts to bail them out. This one was bailed out to an elliptical shape, 18 feet wide and 27 feet long. The smaller caisson bells were designed to be round and could be built out mechanically. We were very interested in what happened to our caissons after completion of construction. In this era of 100-story high-rises, it's become extremely important to provide documentation of the load-bearing characteristics of the caissons. At the bottom of our caissons, we placed stress meters. Incrementally, up the shaft, we placed Carlson strain gauges. The readings are programmed into a computer at the University of Wisconsin. When the horizontal force of the wind buffets the building, and we're talking about 70 mile an hour winds now, sometimes more, this is transformed into a vertical force that travels down the core and into the caisson bell. On the other side, there would normally be an uplift force some buildings are so light that the building's weight on the windward side approaches zero. However, with the weight of Lake Point Tower, there are no uplift tendencies at all. Before we place the instrumentation in the shafts, we put in the reinforcement. The stress meter is being placed at the bottom of the caisson just above the bell.